Now, if, like most of us, you look at your high street and see boarded-up shops, charity ventures and the same dreary brands as everywhere else, don't despair. You could be living in Dewsbury or Dudley or Hartlepool or Margate, Stockport or West Bromwich, which Newsnight has discovered will be named as the towns with the highest proportion of unoccupied shops later this week. The government claims to be troubled by what's happening to high streets across the land and has asked Mary Portus, so-called Queen of Shops, to investigate and come up with ideas for bringing some life back to the high street. Steve Smith has been out with her. <laughs> Whoever said it's grim up north never saw a walkabout in Rotherham by telly fashionista Mary Portus. It's brilliant. See, it's something different, isn't it? David Cameron's Shops Czar. Wow, look at this. That said, not even her copper bob and towering heels could entirely distract the eye from vacant premises and cut price discount chains. Pound shops are catching on here. <laughs> Probably not for you, but they're Probably saying... Probably not for you either. Possibly not. Is that a pound jacket? What do you jacket? think of the schmutter? Very nice. This is something I believe in. As someone who's spent 25 years in retail, this is what I believe in, and I would be looking at this and doing this despite government. If government support it, which I'm hoping they will, then we will be able to hopefully leverage this a lot quicker than if I was doing this on my own or working with councils. They're all right like that for you? Yeah, they're fine. At this baker's in Rotherham town centre, they mostly warm up snacks for office workers. They say people prefer to go to supermarkets for the family loaf and the big shop. Other outlets have simply disappeared. There's no gents outlets, no gents, no toy shops, what kiddies can't, you know, entertain your kiddies for half an hour in a toy shop, there's nothing like that. Unless you stand, stand them in Argos, let them look through a catalogue, it's not the same for a kiddie, they like to have touchy feely things, don't they? You better shop around. Oh, yeah, you better shop around. Shop, shop, shop. In the shopping jargon, the footfall has all been going away from the high street in many parts of the country. But analyst Matthew Hopkinson has been heading in the opposite direction, crunching the number of shops as they shut. As recently as two years ago, only 6% of shops on Britain's high streets were disused. Now more than 14% of them are. That's 29,000. The reality that comes out of this is that we have got permanent change here and that some of these centres who are right up in the high, one in three shops being vacant, will never go back to what they used to be and therefore there has to be some kind of change of use or purpose for that centre. In some towns, well over a quarter of shops are idle and shut up. Newsnights discovered that the six places with the biggest problem include Hartlepool, Dewsbury and Stockport in the north, Dudley and West Bromwich in the Midlands and Margate in the south. And even very respected people are saying, get rid of the high street, it's finished. It's out of town. I think there Mars. are some towns, I don't think it's finished, that's just, that's ridiculous. We have towns where it is working. There are towns where it's dead. The, the horse has bolted and it's, I'm telling and you, just give up on those. Give up. I think there's some towns where we have to look at, and we have to look at a rejuvenation and a regeneration that will be different and whether that's housing or looking about how you can change some of the towns. That has to be done. It's bonkers to say that we can do them all. We won't be able to do them all. But there are many towns vis-a-vis -vis one here that have great potential to do that. And it's looking at what that new business model will be and looking at how consumers have changed. This is the severed foot, or leg, should I say. Uh, 2.99. Fantastic for the kids for the Halloween dip. What will they be going for? Um, an arm and a leg. Very good. <laughs> he did the monster match. He did the monster match. The monster match. Yes, more delicate retailers may recoil in horror, but pile them high, sell them cheap stores like this one are rising from the tomb of the high street as we knew and loved it. No, I don't want it. The low budget shops, which are opening as others go dark, score well on price and convenience, but they claim they can only operate at bargain basement wage levels. They did the match. They did the we pay the minimum wage and then obviously the staff, um, the supervisors and the managers are obviously on more money, yeah. Um, Is that but fair that, and ethical, do you think? Are you making profits on the back of your workers? Absolutely not, not no. Extent? We're either here and trading at, at the absolute 
minimum on the profit margins. The profit margins are very thin. You were right in what you said earlier. It's stack it high and sell it cheap. And that's the only way we can do it. But um, So you couldn't afford to pay them more? The we model couldn't. Just wouldn't the, the model wouldn't work. But on the day the shop czar came to town, Newsnight found evidence of some innovative thinking in Rotherham. Council workers tried to brighten the centre by getting rid of chewing gum. They turned the mess into a crime scene out of an old detective movie. Is that what they meant by gumshoe? We remember people, we remember the names that come yeah. back. Hello, Mrs. You know, Porter's yeah. here again. And after this shoe shop owner was refused a loan by the banks to expand his business, the borough council are thinking of stepping in to act as guarantor. They'd wanted to buy the buildings themselves, and then when the new government came in, they said, look, draw a line under that, don't spend any more money. That's when we stepped in to try it. They've been very, very supportive, and now they're going to kind of be guarantors against a mortgage for us. We won't get any money, we have to pay every penny back, but they'll be there behind us and sort of assuring the, whoever the lender is that we'll repay it. And don't you want Mary to buy a pair of your boots while she's here? Is <laughs> she can have too a pair if she wants a pair. <laughs> Is that news tonight? Ever sophisticated. That's us. What's very curious about the shop czar, including perhaps for the ministers who recruited her, is that she believes shops aren't necessarily the answer. I don't know whether I'm optimistic. I'm realistic. And I'm going to give it my best shot in thinking on what the retail future can be for town centres and also it might not be the mix that we've seen. In fact, I probably guess it won't be the mix that we've seen over the last 20 years, and that we'll be looking at a very different mix, and it might not all be retail on the towns. Um, it might be social meeting places, and any reason to get people back into this, because if we don't, we will have some really social problems on our hands, and I think we've seen that, you know, even with the riots, that if there isn't this sense of belonging. Mary Porter says she's had no guarantees from government that they'll implement her advice in the autumn when she offers the high street her brand of retail therapy.